of sorrows, Lamb of God, by His own betrayed. The sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus laid. Silent as He stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned. Bowing to the Father's will, He took a crown of thorns. of heaven, God's own Son, to purchase and redeem, and reconcile the very ones who nailed Him to that tree. The precious blood that my Jesus spilled Now the curse of sin has no hold on me Whom the sun sets free, oh it's free indeed And now my debt is paid, it is paid in full By the precious blood The stone is rolled away Behold the empty tomb Hallelujah
saving me, for healing me, for loving me, God. Ooh. 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 Seacoast Church. Well, this is uh, not quite the way we thought we'd celebrate Easter Sunday um, in 2021, but uh, unfortunately it, it is the way it is. And uh, I'm so glad that you uh, are able to join us and uh, be part of this this morning. Uh, we're going to uh, share in communion together firstly, and uh, I've invited Lindy to, uh, to lead us in that, and then I'll uh, come and bring uh, the message for today. Uh, but before we do that, I'd just like to pray. Father, we thank you that regardless or no, no, no matter where we are uh, right now, sitting in our lounge rooms or wherever we are, Lord God, we, we celebrate Easter uh, together. We, we celebrate the resurrection life that you have imparted to us and given us as a free gift. And uh, so today, Lord God, I, I really pray that these words that are spoken and uh, the messages that are shared would touch our hearts, Lord, Lord would, would revitalize us and, uh, and build us with faith. And, uh, and we thank you, Lord, we thank you for this celebration and we thank you that we celebrate uh, Easter. We celebrate resurrection life every day and we give you all the thanks and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to Resurrection Sunday. Let us welcome the day of the Lord in joy and peace. Let it bring blessings to our hearts. The thoughts and fears of what is happening around us be put aside to honour Jesus and celebrate his resurrection. On this day, we acknowledge that we have all received his fullness and grace. We who were dead through sin have been brought to life together with Christ. We have been raised up with him so that we may sit in heavenly places with him. Easter is a celebration of the gift God gave us through the death, burial and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. The ultimate sacrifice God made as a father by sending his one and only son to take the atonement for our sins. Think of all the pain and suffering he went through to provide salvation for you and me and the victory of that. Romans 5.8 says, God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. It puts the meaning of grace into a simplified statement. God loves us so much that even though we mess up, he still sent his only son to die for us. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. What is Easter? Forget about the bunnies and chocolate eggs. It's the one of the most important celebrations in the Christian calendar. At Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. After his crucifixion, death and burial, three days later, he arose from the grave. 
In doing so, he conquered death and released us from captivity by paying the ultimate ransom and set us free from sin, which means the eternal life that is granted to all who believe in him. The purpose of Easter also means the full confirmation of all that Jesus taught and preached during his three-year ministry. If he had not risen from the dead, if he had not simply died and not been raised to life again, he would have been thought just another teacher or prophet. However, his resurrection rebuked all that and provided undeniable proof that he was truly the Son of God. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the core of the Christian gospel. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 14, that if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then our preaching is useless and so is our faith. The apostles would have continued as a disheartened group until they met the risen Christ, which is depicted in John 20, 19 to 22. It was late that Sunday evening and the disciples were gathering behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. And after this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And in Acts 2.4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. We celebrate Easter because this holiday recognises that we can die to our old way of living and resurrect into a new life in Christ. Christianity does require a death to self, but the resurrection we experience in a spiritual sense and the resurrection of the body we have yet to experience give us great cause for celebration. We have full confidence that whatever happens to us on earth, we can experience eternal joy with God in heaven because we have a greater hope and promise. In Romans 10, 9 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It is incredible integral to our faith that we believe in the resurrection our faith has no foundation if we don't believe Jesus rose again I will finish now with 1 Peter 1 3 blessed be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ according to his great mercy he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead amen let us eat and drink Well, good morning again, Seacoast Church. As I said, this is not the way we thought we'd be celebrating Easter this year. But one thing is for sure. We have proven that we are a resilient, faith-filled body of believers. Thank you for supporting our decision to cancel these Easter services. It in no way changes our ongoing passion and perseverance to see Jesus continue to build his church here in Ballina. If you have been on this journey with us in, in recent times, you'll also know that since coming out of COVID shutdown last year, God has been rebuilding his church here at Seacoast to be even stronger and more resilient than ever before. We've seen a fresh wind blow across our worship times and it's exciting to watch, to watch on in wonder and think, where could we possibly go from here? In my message last week about the church, I sense the Holy Spirit taking us deeper into our understanding of who we are as Christ's body on earth. I can't go back into all of that now, but there's a, a revelation to be had about who we are together. I remember that quote from the voice translation uh, in Romans 12:5. It says, we too, the many, are different parts that form one body in the anointed one. Each one of us is joined with one another and we become together what we could not be alone. We should never take the body of Christ, the church, for granted. Together we are in Christ and together we are one in him. All that the Son has with the Father is ours, the glory, the love, the power. And we can never 
find that to the same degree on our own. It's something that happens more and more as we build our lives together. I bring that up again today on Easter Day because I'm beginning to understand just what it means for us to allow ourselves to go to the depths of the meaning of who we are. You'll get what I'm saying about that in a moment, but basically the deeper we go, then the higher we go. In conversations with different ones, I'm discovering more and more how powerful it is to recognise and appreciate the, the depths of our vulnerability, even our brokenness. Because it seems that the more we get real with those deep areas of our life, the more we can then reach up into the places of glory and power that is in Christ. After all, he looks at the heart, all the issues of the heart. He wants truth. He wants real. And there is the key for truly understanding Easter. You can't possibly experience the joy and excitement of Sunday if you haven't had the revelation of the horror of what happened on Friday. Because, because this is our only Easter message this weekend, I want to tie Good Friday and Easter Sunday together today. Because together, together they encapsulate everything that makes our lives what they are. So what happened Friday? Yes, Jesus was crucified in our place on the cross. He took the punishment for our sin that we deserved. And he didn't just die. He was tormented. He suffered in excruciating pain. He was beaten. He was shamed. He was mocked. But one of the most powerful verses that changes everything for us, for, for all of mankind, is what Paul says to the church. In Colossians 2.14, it says, Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. If you don't go away with anything else today, keep that picture in your mind. Your sin is nailed to the cross. Listen to how it's put in the Passion Translation. It says he cancelled out every legal violation we had on our record and the, and the arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. If we are to truly appreciate this new life in Christ that we now have, this resurrection life, then we must first acknowledge and appreciate the depth of just how condemned and lost and doomed we were. We have a righteous and holy God, a God of glory. And what other kind of God would we want? An unrighteous one? Of course not. We need and love a God who is just and pure-hearted, a God of divine love. But the reality and the dilemma for us is described in Romans 3.23. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We have all had a long list of violations. They are called sin. We don't talk a lot about sin, but it's vital that we understand that Jesus died because of our sin. My sin, your sin. He was tormented and tortured because of our sin. It started with Adam and Eve in their rebellion. But you and I and every generation of humanity have carried it on very nicely ever since. It was all written down. How could a righteous God just overlook it and brush it under the carpet? That could never happen. We all had this legal case against us and we deserved the punishment ourselves. But what happened on Friday was the most powerful demonstration of love and mercy that the universe has ever seen. When those nails were forced through the flesh of Jesus, through his hands and his feet, do you know what else they went through? Those nails pierced through the list of all your sin. All the requirements of sin that were against us, that legal document was nailed to the cross along with Jesus himself. 
In fact, it's nailed permanently there as a reminder that sin has been dealt with once and for all, forever left at the cross. And if you are tempted to allow pity to overwhelm you, pity for Jesus, if it causes tears to well up in your eyes because of the price that he has paid, then we have to remember what Jesus himself said to the women who followed him on that day as he carried the cross, as he carried that cross to the hill called Calvary. They too were crying for him, understandably. But he says this in, in Luke 23, 28. He says, it says, but Jesus, turning to them, said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus wasn't particularly talking about them personally, but about their people. He was talking about Jerusalem and, and, and their nation. He's saying, save your tears for the lost, for the lost of the world, for those who are crucifying me this day, for those who will refuse and reject the gift of eternal life that I am offering them. For Jesus, he saw the bigger picture and he wanted those that he loved to see it too. John 16 verse 20 and says, Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. A woman when she is in labour has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for, for, the, for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Verse 22, therefore you now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. In Hebrews, it says in uh, chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's like Jesus was saying to us, and is saying still, this is what I have been set apart to do, to bring salvation to many. He recognised the suffering he would endure, but he, but he was even more concerned that those watching on and those of us who have come down through the centuries would grasp the, the reality of what we have been saved from. To pray for those around us, to lift up the true depth and meaning of the gospel. And one of the most powerful scriptures, sitting right next to John 3.16, which we all know so well, John 3.17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I really want our focus today to be on the big picture of salvation. Not only the tremendous price that Jesus paid, but the understanding that what, we, what he did for us was something out of this world. He laid down his own life. Nobody took it from him. He could have destroyed his enemies with a word, but he cared more about you and I and what the cross would mean for us. The father nailed your sin to the cross with his own son's life. Let that sink in. But then, you know, that was Friday, but then comes Sunday. Jesus rose from, from the dead in resurrection power. The angels rolled back the stone from his tomb. He walked free, having conquered death, not only for himself, but for every man, woman and child who would put their trust in him and their hope in him. Jesus knew Sunday was coming. He had told his disciples that it would happen. He would enter into the fullness of joy, having conquered death for us. Joy empowered him to endure, not sympathy, not the weeping and grieving of others, but the joy that was set before him. We know that he witnessed his resurrection to many in those following days. But we also know through John's revelation that he entered into heaven with unimaginable joy and victory. As a sacrificial lamb, Jesus is exalted in heaven. In Revelation 5, verse 9, it says, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to, to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have, and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests of our God, 
and we shall reign on the earth. Then in uh, Revelation 5 verse 11, it says, then I, then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and blessing. Verse 13, and every creature which is in, in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all of them um, I heard saying, blessing and honour and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. What powerful scriptures. What a powerful vision. Church, this is our celebration too. Today and every day, this should be our new song. Jesus has accomplished for us what no one else could possibly do because he was the only pure lamb that was worthy. But do you know what? He's not only the lamb. At the same time, he's the lion. And in Revelation 5.5, 5, it says, But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Here we are given the bigger picture of Jesus as the lion, the one who is filled with majesty, power and glory, the one who is king of kings and, and lord of lords. There's a fierceness and a righteousness about him, which, which we see later on is prophesied he, he, as he is prophesied to return in the end days. In Revelation 19, we see Jesus coming on a white horse. He's coming in righteousness to judge and to make war. His eyes are a flame of fire. His head is covered with many crowns. He's clothed with a, a robe dipped in blood. And his name is the word of God. He has the armies of heaven following him. And there's a fierceness about him. And on his robe and his thigh, the words are written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Wow, this is Jesus. This is the one who died for you. He nailed your sins to the cross, forever dealt with. He rose on the third day by the power of the resurrection. The same resurrection spirit and power that lives and abides in us. He is the lamb, but he's also the lion. He is the king. This is the overwhelming depth of his nature and character. This is who he is. No wonder he says, I am who I am. And out of the depth of revelation of who he is, we worship him. We lift him up. We rise up into greater realms of glory where he is. We sing a new song. All the prophecies were fulfilled. If you want to weep at the cross, don't do it for Jesus. Do it from a position of faith knowing that your sins have been forgiven. And do it for others who are yet to have that revelation. If you don't think your sins are too bad, then your revelation of Jesus and what he's done will be very ordinary. But if you are horrified that your own sins, which are many, have nailed him to the cross and caused his death, then your revelation will be great. And here is something very powerful. If you truly grasp the meaning of the cross and the resurrection, then you will be empowered to live for righteousness. Sin will have no, more, no power over you. You will, have, you will no longer be enslaved. Jesus has redeemed you from bondage. You are free. In Isaiah 53 verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was uh, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Not that you were healed, but you are healed. You are healed spiritually, emotionally, physically, intellectually, relationally. And because you are healed, you are a new person, a person set free from all bondage. What a revelation that is. Scripture says, it says it the best. Having identified the ungodly passions of those without Christ, Paul then declares who we truly are and have been empowered to be. So let me finish with this. Ephesians 4, 20-24. This is from the Passion Translation. 
It says, but this is not the way of life that Christ has unfolded within you. If you have really experienced the anointed one and heard his truth, it will be seen in your life. For we know that the ultimate reality is embodied in Jesus. And he has taught you to let go of the lifestyle of the ancient man, the old self life, which was corrupted by sinful and deceitful desires that spring from delusions. Now it's time to be made to be made new by every revelation that's been given to you and be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within, as your new life and live in union with him. For God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness and now you belong to him in his realm of true holiness. I really hope and pray that this has been this message has been a blessing to you because it was a blessing for me as I put it together. In the end, it's God's Word, the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. Remember, out of the depth of revelation, the depth of our understanding of who we once were, but now who we are in Christ, let us worship Him and exalt Him in spirit and in truth. The Holy Spirit is leading us into a realm of glory that we've never experienced before. But he won't do it without equipping us, teaching us, and strengthening us. The best is definitely yet to come, and we were born for so much more. God bless you. See you in real life next Sunday. Regardless of the remaining restrictions, we'll meet together. If you've been blessed by today's message, pass it on to others. Share it on Facebook and multimedia. And if you would like to make a comment, we'd love to hear from you. You can do that below. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.